I'm good. Go ahead, Bill. Does that mean we're good? Is the show on? Are you sure? Welcome to Hammer Down! Down! Number one sports gambling podcast coming out of Pat McAfee Incorporated offices. I am Tone Diggs. Pat will be joining us in a second. Bubba Gumpino sitting right there. Good day, Tony. Looks incredible in that Liverpool Nike hoodie. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Big game How do you on feel? Sunday. How do you feel today? Tough day. Yeah, Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, former NFL GM, host of the Lombardi Line, the GM Shuffle Pod. Uh, subscribe to the Daily Coach. Michael Lombardi, how are you doing today, sir? I, I'm doing really well, thank you. I, I'm doing well. It's uh, you know exciting. I mean, we we are finally getting to the end of this, so I'm doing good. Wait, wait you know what? Hey, good for us, Mike. Good for us. Yeah, we did it. We did it. 56 games, all the playoff games. I mean, who who can? I'm proud of the show we put on this year. Um, hey. No bullshit today. Yeah, all winners. Uh, first, except for I, watch thirty for thirty. Did you? Yes, I did. What you uh, think? Some people in the office did. I did not get to it yet. Were you in it? No, it's about Al and Roselle. Nobody was in it. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and so, yeah, no. I thought the voice. Maybe one day I'll, I'm going to put them on my pod. You guys can listen to them on my pod. I'm going to bring on the, the 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 best Al Davis impersonator out there. Who's so that? You, Hear it yourself. That guy was bad last night. Yeah, they. Someone said the uh, like the voice and the face thing was a little bit weird, but it was weird. They didn't need that. They spent money on something they didn't need. Wait, what else is new, Mike? Yeah, that's well, the worldwide leader. You know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no bullshit. Um, Let's do it. Come on. I uh, I fucking, I had a good, a pretty good chuckle when you tweeted. Bears might be competing with themselves in this market. Just saying. Well, I, I'm just I, from what I've gathered is I think they're in it. I, I don't I don't think there's other teams that are in it at this ridiculous pricing. So I, I, I I'm not I don't think Indianapolis is in it at this pricing. Why would you if the if the price is high? What pricing? What pricing are you hearing? For that are you know that are kind of out outlandish. Mike, what what pricing are you hearing? Uh, you know I can't get it confirmed. I heard you know basically that the. the it's the uh, uh, he he was asking some people for a deal similar to what the the Bears gave up for uh, Jay Cutler. Was that that, that was two enough. first, wasn't it? Was that two first for Cutler? I th- let me see here. I'll, I'll tell you exactly. That's the beautiful. Uh, you can Google it, can't you? <laughs> uh, of course, I typed Jay Cutler and I got all his. You know, let's Bears. Not- you know, I got all his social stuff. I got Christine Calavera. I got all that. Now I got to go back. All right. So they gave up Kyle Wharton and first-round picks in 2009, which is an 18th overall, and 2010, and a third. And a third. Well, this guy's not. This guy's not. Not. Not Jay Cutler. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's. He, I mean, Jay. If you could say a lot of stuff about Jay, Jay never lacked confidence. Carson Wentz. <laughs> Or toughness. What, what people misconstrued about Jay, Jay ran the veer at Vanderbilt. He was a tough bastard. Which now, is, he had, had body language, there's no doubt. Running the veer with Jay at Vanderbilt was a wild decision, Mike. Yeah. We're talking about how... Um, What's up, boys? They're talking about the Mike's thinking or hearing the asking price for Wentz right now is, isn't the same as the Jay Cutler market, which was two first. But that's what he's trying to get. I don't know if he's going to get that. I can't imagine anybody's be willing to pay that plus pay $45 million. I can't imagine that. What Teams are your are thoughts t- there? I think he's broken. Huh? I think he's broken. I do too. I wouldn't give up one first if you got to take that contract. Me too, Gump. I'm with you. Why? Why? It's like the it's like the uh, the Lions. Like you get paid for taking on that contract. You don't have to pay for it, right? You're literally yeah. you're literally pawning him off on another team. Like that that's what's well, happening. There's this whole there's this whole perception that's being created that he, there's a huge market for him. That's how you get the price up. You as a general manager, you got to sit there and play poker. You got to play. Is is this a real hand or is this a bad hand? You got to be. You got to be KGB. You got to sit there and lick your fucking cookie and see what's going on. There's got to be at least five, if not ten, free agent quarterbacks at this point that are better than Carson Wentz. Hold on, can we talk about the bluff hand that you have to call out there? The whenever I was talking to McDermott earlier today. By the way, great conversation, Mike. I don't know if Very you, good. Sean McDermott, I, good I conversation. To to I don't know if you know him. Do you know him at all? 
No, I don't. I don't. Good conversation. It was a great conversation. Felt like he was real. The Connor asked the question about it was alleged that New England was in on the Stephon Diggs deal and the Bills edged them out or whatever. And Sean uh-huh. McDermott basically talked about how, you know, rumors, whenever they come, you kind of got to keep that out of there. That's definitely the Vikings trying to drive up the asking rate for, for Stephon Diggs, right? Leaking, oh, who would the Bills not want Stephon Diggs to go to? Oh, the Patriots. You don't know that if you're involved in the trade, right? You have no idea? No, you don't. You just, you you know, basically you make your offer. It's, it's, it's a blind negotiation. It's like, you know, you, you make your offer and see if you can nibble. And, you know, you try to figure out if you can hear what's going on inside the organization, but typically you can't. But let's piece this one together, the Bears, right? So they got Filippo, who's their off quarterback coach. He was with Frank Wright in Philly, but with, with Carson Wentz. So you know there's interest there. I don't think – I know in the way the Colts operate, Ballard's not going to do something stupid. So Ballard's going to look at this as, if you want me to take the contract, I might do that, but I'm not giving away assets. They're not going to be stupid. Right. That's just the way I think Chris would operate. Whereas I I think some of these teams, you know, Springsteen has a great line in one of his songs. He says, sometimes I can't tell my courage from my desperation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these teams are desperate and they think they're being courageous. Man, I I had to walk because this morning Wentz was going to the Colts. It was close (laughs) this morning. And then when the show started, Wentz was going to the Colts. Then about an hour and a half in, probably the show, Yeah, the hour, Bears hour. became the mm-hmm. favorite two hours in. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, we can't trust anything out there, literally. Well, I, I, I will say this, and I'll tell you after today, I'll give you some stuff that I know that I can't say today that I don't think that's even remotely this morning was accurate. I, I can tell you. I can <laughs> that, tell was you. A pretty, that was a pretty <laughs> like, like serious statement there. I can tell you right now that, Ballard is on 1075 The Fan right now, and he said we are exploring lots of options at quarterback. I can tell you this. There's no trade going down today. And then From I'm, him, him, I'm sure. He's not doing it. Do we th- is there a possibility that Wentz could be traded before the Super Bowl, Mike? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it feels that I way. Know. I don't know. Usually there's a moratorium on it, but, you know, usually – but this is not a non-typical Super Bowl. I don't I, – I, you know, people in Philly think it's close. Mike, when you – you've seen Moneyball, right? Yeah. When GMs are making trades, is it similar to how the scene in Moneyball where he's and where he's talking to his secretary and he's saying, "Get this GM on the line," calls them, "Get this GM on the line," things like that. Yeah. Well, it depends on what time of the year it is. In the off, you know, in the slow period now, you know, you're just in your office, you're texting or self or calling the guy during the draft. It's more of a telephone. Hit that button. You get, you know, you get the Colts. Hit that button. That's you get awesome. the Washington team. Hit that button. You know, yeah, it's draft because, day. Kevin, because you got to make you got to make trades in a really quick process. Was Kevin Costner movie. portraying you in that movie? Essentially, I was the GM when he came through there. Yeah, that was a great, great experience for me. He came through, so uh, I got an opportunity to sit down with him. Of course, my wife wanted to have lunch with him, which he was kind <laughs> enough to do, which he's <laughs> tremendous. But then I, uh, I, uh, I, I, I get to quiz him on JFK. You know what he told me he does? Which I thought was remarkable. Do you guys watch Yellowstone, by the way? Yeah, hold yeah. on, hold on, oh, hold yeah. the Come fuck on. on. You're the, hold on. You're the best, Mike. You're the general manager for the Cleveland Browns. This guy's playing a general manager for the Cleveland Browns. You get a chance to chat with him, and he's like, the last thought Kevin Costner had going in there was, this guy's going to quiz me on JFK here. This is why you are the greatest human walking, Mike. Yeah. So I wanted to talk to him about JFK. You know, I wanted to talk to him about, you know, that that street in, in New Orleans and all the shit with Oliver Stone was talking about. So we hit we hit him on that. And he asked me some questions. Then Jennifer Gardner came over and she spent some time talking. She was the capologist in there. Mm-hmm. So she wanted to know about the cap. And then the greatest conversation I had of all time was with Ivan Reitman. Ivan Reitman was the producer of this movie. Now, Ivan Reitman produced Stripes. Animal House, mm-hmm. you know, all the and what I told uh, Ghostbusters, what I told Ivan the first time I met him, I said, yo, dude, you know, you're the guy that you've made movies that you can't change the channel when you see them on. Yeah. Like you can't change Animal House when it's on the TV. Like you're flipping. Oh, there's Adam. I'm watching. Right. There's Stripes. I'm watching. You know, there's Ghostbusters. I'm watching. Right. That's Ivan Reitman. So then, like, there was things about Stripes that I wanted to get cleared up in my head. Like, what bridge was he on when he throws the suitcases over? Because I'm kind of neurotic about Jesus. that shit. I like to know where it was, what city, you know. And so we went through that. And then he told me all about Animal House, how they filmed the parade, how they did it all, you know, how it all kind of came together. That whole parade scene was filmed in one day. Uh, what were you gonna it ask- was great. 
It was one of the best conversations of my life. I loved it. <laughs> We're going to ask about Yellowstone, Mike. I mean, well, look. because I, you guys, Kevin Costa. I mean, I'm a Yellowstone fan too. I love Yellowstone. I mean, I, it, I, it's I think, it's uh, completely changed Tony's trans, life. Transformed my life, Mike. He's a cowboy yeah, now. I think, I think that she would be the greatest coach of all time. Beth would be a great coach. <laughs> You're right. So you Italians just love this mafia out in the middle of nowhere thing. Absolutely. Huh? Well, yeah, because it's it's all about family. It's keeping within the family. It's keep. It's about owning your land. It's about not letting anybody take anything from you. You know. Owning. I'm gonna start watching it. Kind of corporate. Or you kind would of, love it, Pat. You and your wife will love it. It's really good. The scenery's beautiful. It's a good story. It scenery's beautiful. You know, it, it's it flows really well. It's not like the same thing over again. Like you're not going to get that. And they Diggs, introduce new characters along the way. I think it's really good. Diggs is transformed because of this show. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you Diggs, what, out there, they have a Yellowstone. Like you can, they have a place that like, they rent the like the cabin that uh, what's his face lives in. Who's gonna who's with Beth? Uh, uh, Rip the guy's Rip name? Wheeler. Huh? Rip Wheeler. Rip, right. <laughs> that you can sleep in his cabin. Mike, well, you just took a few thousand dollars out of my bank account. Yeah. Um, let's win that money back right now. Mike, who are you taking in the Super Bowl? I am here's my Super Bowl. I'll give you the over and I'll give you the pick all in one sentence. I like the Chiefs thirty to twenty. So you got the Chiefs and the under. Okay. You see, you're so quick that you see you're so it's a good processor. Mike, I'm not going to waste any time either. I like the Chiefs and the under as well. Okay. I also think that it is going to be more than seven points. I thought maybe more than 10 points, but th uh, 30, 30 I, 20 can sounds nice. Can I give nice. you a couple nukes? Oh, yes, please do. What's All that? Right, so he wants to give some nukes. Patrick and, and Mr. Gump, yes, before sir. you give your picks, Mahomes is 44-9 and nine in his career. He's had only five games during that span where he's lost by six points or more. His largest deficit in a defeat occurred this year against the Raiders. Okay? 31 of those wins have been by six or more points. Okay? So in three games, he has thrown three picks in one game twice in his career, winning one, losing one. He has thrown two picks in just three games, winning two, losing one. The point of the story is if you think the Chiefs are going to lose because Mahomes doesn't play good, you better think again. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and in his lot, he's never lost a game where they scored more than thirty-five. I believe, Mike. Or yeah, no. I didn't look at that, but um, I, look, his numbers. Sorry. Like what I wrote today for the Athletic was basically, if you're like I wrote about it from the perspective of one of the greatest bus rides, Pat, and you've shared this, and I and I'm sure you felt the same way when you got on that team bus going to the stadium to go play the Super Bowl. That's the greatest bus ride of your life. You couldn't have a better bus ride, right? It's you awesome. Have, I mean, you sat in the same seat you always sat in. You thought the same thing. You had the same music, but the whole thing was different. And so I wrote this column from that perspective, and I basically tried to say, what are they thinking about? And, you know, Brady's played in nine Super Here's the beautiful thing about Brady. It, Brady's thrown 393 passes in Super Bowls alone. <laughs> Jeez. That's the stats thing that comes out about Tom every Jeez. once in a while, and you go, this guy is absurd. <laughs> exactly so anyway I, I i so i went through it look i'm hope tom wins i hope i'm wrong i just don't know i can't see how the chiefs don't do this i just the way they've done it over 26 games yeah there you is, guys have the floor there is a thought <laughs> that you shouldn't bet against tom brady in the super bowl tom brady only four and five against the spread in the super bowl oh people forget people I'll take forget. the chiefs minus the three and I'll also do a parlay Chiefs money line and the under plus one ninety five. So you have the under and Chiefs money line. No, I'm taking the Chiefs minus three. Okay, and I'm taking a parlay Chiefs just to win mm -hmm. and the under plus one ninety five. Okay. So you like two official bets? Yes, sir. Am I up? You are. I like tails. Okay, minus one hundred three. Mm -hmm. I put thirty thousand dollars on that, Mike. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. Well, what do you think, Mike? On tails? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's a 50-50 prop. I'll be rooting for tails. That's all I can tell you. I'm hoping. I mean, I, if he wins, I'll be happy. It's one of the, As far as uh, percentages and the juice, it's one of the best bets on the board. That's why I did it, okay? That's why I did it. And because there's a little bit of a birdie out there that says – the head side a little bit heavier than the tail side. That is why. Tom said that. Yep, sure did. Yep. So as long as we get a 
you know, an active flipper as opposed to a, ah, which does happen every <laughs> once in a while. If we have an active flipper, I believe physics, which we learned about, should take place here. Entail seems like the right win. And if it hits, by the way, you know, 30 grand, we're about to, uh, you know, probably give away some money, Mike, if I had to guess, but also celebrate hard while we're live on the Countdown to Kickoff Celebration Super Show. And I, I don't like whenever we do this, but it would be really cool if this is how we ended the season, you know, as one unit yeah. on the Chiefs minus three. Mm-hmm. And I think that is what, that is what we have here, boys. I think we are all on one yes. side. I think we are all on the side that this Chiefs team, somehow people must have forgot that I know 56% of the money line wagers are going on the Buccaneers, and I know like five out of the eight states or six out of the eight states or nine states is thinking that the Bucs are going to win on FanDuel's uh, percentages mm-hmm. and all that shit, but I feel like people have forgot the Chiefs is the Chiefs, dude, okay? The Chiefs is the Chiefs. And although the Chiefs didn't cover all goddamn year, and they cost us all a lot of money, okay? They cost us all a lot of money. If you look at what they did in the championship game, and if you look at what they did in moments where they had to play well, they just do. And Tom Brady is an immovable object. I understand. He will be in the Super Bowl. That's how it goes. But this seems to be something that is much powerful than anything we can fully understand. That whole team has an it factor to them. Travis Kelsey has an it factor. Tyreek Hill has an it factor. Patrick Mahomes has an it factor. It feels like Tyron Matthew has an it factor. There is still players on that Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. I'm not doubting them at all. But this Chiefs team, people seem to have forgot the last couple weeks that they they is the Chiefs. Uh So I'm riding with the Chiefs as well. We got a team bet on the Super Bowl. Hopefully tails hits. Hopefully Chiefs hit for all of us. And let's celebrate the shit out of this 2020 NFL season. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm talking about Paisan. The Chiefs is the Chiefs, dude. You know, it's hard to, you know, you 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 keep searching for ways to how they're going to play them. And the only reason that game was a three-point game, and we all know it because we, we talked about betting that game, was because the Chiefs kind of, the Chiefs let them back in. And then when the Chiefs had to run the clock out, what did they do? They, they ran the clock out. They did. Yeah. Hey, and we talk a lot about the Chiefs uh, on offense. This stat's been going around. Uh, Chiefs defense on throws, ten yards plus, ten yards plus downfield. They are the best as far as completion percentage is concerned. The best as far as the touchdown interception ratio is concerned, and best as far as uh, passer rating is concerned. So, the Bucks are looking to throw it down the field. Chiefs defense is not the defense you want to do it against. That's right. I mean, look, I think the Chiefs defense, as I've said this before to you, is all about trying to create negative plays. And I think that they do such a good job of confusing you. They do such a good job. Like, you can feel really comp- confident. And I'm sure the Bucks feel really confident tonight, tomorrow. But when that game starts and some of those blitzes start that you feel really comfortable and confident about handling, you don't handle, then it becomes a problem. And all they're looking for is to create a negative play on one play on a series. That's all they want to do. They don't care if you run it for eight yards on first down or if you get two first. They don't care. They want to create one negative play a series. And if they do that, they're really hard to play. Breaking news, Pat's coin flip bet is officially in. It is officially got placed in there. Game on. Mitz, you know. Just, just, don't worry about it, Mitt. Don't worry. But don't. Please don't. Don't worry about it. But it is. it has officially been, not that I don't have faith in you, Mitt, but I just don't know if it's going to be long enough and serve enough of a point. The thirty thousand dollar tails bet has officially gone in. I had to up my maximum wager. Oh, they were protecting you. <laughs> yeah, so I had to up it. Now that thing will be at thirty thousand dollars. By the way, I think forever. Is that where that's going to yeah, be? Yeah, I believe so. so which is Beautiful. dangerous. That is very dangerous. Beautiful. But when this hits, the tails hits. Let's all rejoice, my friends. Hey, by the way, oh, yeah. beautiful speech about this show and the Chiefs. By the way. Thank you. I really got in there, didn't I? You did. I did not expect it, it to get awesome. in there. was awesome. That was kind of like Sean McDermott conversation earlier today. Mm-hmm. We it, got into the middle of it. I did not expect to get in the middle of it. This show has been awesome this year, and I think a lot of people have uh, shared the same thing with the interactions on the internet and stuff. I think this show has been something different than any other show through the football season. Well said, I agree, Gump. Well said. Hey, we appreciate you, Gump. You hey, too, Paisan. Thanks, thanks, thanks for everything like, this year, you, like, you like anything else tonight? Any other nuggets tonight? <laughs> tonight? So yeah, hold on. Ohio hold, State out yesterday. Hold on, before we go yeah, you tonight. Got me there. Before we go tonight, do we have any other? Do we? 
Mike, do you like any players to go over or under anything like that? Any players you I think? I like Gronk over two and a half catches. God. I like Hilaire over – I don't know what his yardage is something, on I think. FanDuel, but I like it over. Uh, I like I like Car- I like like that the uh, the kid from Toledo, the receiver, Johnson. Uh, I like him to go over his catches. What's he have, ten uh, and a half yards or catches? Tyler Johnson – or yards. Yards. Yeah, that's what I thought you said yesterday because I bet that yesterday, so – and uh, what else? Mind. I like the I like the passing attempts to be under the number that they have. Jesus, passing attempts under for both teams or t- total? Yeah. Yes, for both. Uh, Brady to be sacked first. Love it. Plus one hundred. I'm on that. Ooh. Travis Kelsey anytime touchdown minus one sixty. Playoff Lenny anytime touchdown plus one twenty five. Mm-hmm. Tyreek Hill anytime touchdown minus one sixty. Patrick Mahomes anytime touchdown plus two seventy. Jeez, waste. Um, I like. Let me go to my bets already. The uh, it's juiced here at minus one forty, but under ten and a half for the first quarter. Um, Chiefs do have a tendency to come out slow in the playoffs. Uh, Brady scored three points in all nine of his uh, first quarters combined in the Super Bowl, so I'm going under ten and a half there. Uh, team to score last wins the game. 17 and 2 run, I believe. So I'm staying on that one. Opening kickoff to be a touchback. It's on a 17 and 2 run. We've talked about Bucker and his strong leg and how he could potentially put it in the end zone. Pretty deep. That is a touchback, but at 230. Yeah, it's, worth, it's worth plus 230. I'm going to take it. Um, I like this one. This is tasty. First scoring play of the game. If you take Chiefs field goal, it's plus 410. If you take Bucks field goal, it's plus four hundred. So the first score of the game is a field goal at plus four hundred. It's not bad. It's not bad there. Not bad at all. Um, will there be a two point conversion attempt minus one forty? I think that's happened in like seventeen of the last twenty years too. Uh, team to score first wins a game is another one that has happened a lot. Uh, either team to score a touchdown on their opening drive. I'm going no plus one hundred. Well, that's a good one. Tell a little me. filling out process. Yeah. Mm. And I have uh, both teams to score more points in the second half than they do in the first half. Dogs are barking. Dogs, Dogs are barking, are Mike. Dogs are barking. <laughs> I love how upset you get at it every <laughs> time. Uh, Gatorade color, clear or water, plus 350. Where are you getting? Where are you, where are you seeing that at, Paul? Unfortunately. Oh, and unfortunately. Oh, so... Um, but Gump, Gump, you got to be careful. I mean, the, uh, Pat can speak to this better, but I think the players, once they have a certain flavor they like, they don't. That's what they want, and that that's what they expect in that job. I would assume yellow, by the way. In all my years, yeah. In all your years. In all my years, yellow seems to be a pretty. And also, you got yellow with Kansas City, and you have yellow kind of Tampa. Uh, Mick gave me a nice little uh, tidbit uh, before the game. Mitt, are you there? Yeah, the uh, Gatorade for Andy Reid. Last time for the AFC Championship game, apparently they poured confetti on him because he's old. They don't want to get him uh, wet and cold and uh, illness and stuff. COVID. There's no... uh, Smart. There's no confetti an option? There's no no Gatorade shower option. In Indiana, on FanDuel, they won't let you do Gatorade, Gatorade, I don't think. And they also don't have um, the National Anthem over under. But I do have an inside source that is telling me that it's currently coming in about 15, 16 seconds over. Oh, so the over's hitting is what you're saying? I Let's just say it's going against of what I would normally take. Who gave you the inside source? Who's doing this? I mean, Fucking it, Simon Cow. I can tell you that their name ends in an L. <laughs> I'm just, it's an inside job. Maybe. Do we know the person? Do I know the person? You do, yeah. It's an Italian. The fix is in. From Plum. Really? Mm-hmm. How the fuck do they know? Somebody in Plum knows how long the national anthem in the they Super Bowl just, is going to be? They texted me the three rehearsal times. <laughs> like we said yesterday, it always goes back to Pittsburgh. How did this... How did Lombardi, I, you might be just as surprised as me. 
how does somebody at <laughs> our high school fucking know the length of the national anthem at the Super Bowl? Awesome. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, they, they, you know, they know it's the bet on prop, but I'm sure somebody who's at that rehearsal is there timing it, got a stopwatch out, and you know, and saying, "Hey, look, they practiced it three times, and and here's the number," you know. That's why they put limits on those those bets. You can't go over those. I'm told that it was at two fourteen, two sixteen, and two fifteen in rehearsal. <laughs> What is what is the, oh, God, here, dude. What is what is, what is this guy? I love, I love it. Huh? If we want if we want to go down there, I like four and under on dog commercials. <laughs> you like the under on the dog commercials? Yeah, I think I think you know there's going to be a dogs, but because everybody loves having dogs in mm-hmm. commercials, but I think four is too many. I, I'm going under. What do you mean? What do you think about how many times they show Giselle? If they can find her, I'm going to go. They probably posted it at one and a half or a half. I would probably go. If it's at a half, I'd go over. If it's one and a half, I'd go under. There's also a prop bet out there on some sites. Will Nance mention uh, the spread or anything like that? Do not say yes. Uh, he has come out on interviews before and said he does not care about that at all. I mean, you can't. He, you can't he say probably like won't, that. but he, he, he's probably well. Nance is prepared for anything. Let me just say that. You like Jim? Love him. Oh, he's tremendous. How about Tremend- his, do you like his partner in the booth? Me? Yeah, I love Tony. I think Tony does a really good job. I think Tony will do a good job. I think it'll be a good Super Bowl. At least I'll have the volume up for this one. <laughs> hey, how about so- this? The weekend spent seven million of his own money to make that show better. I fucking love that move. Hey, listen, it's my ass out there. You guys won't give. It. Kind of makes the NFL look bad, right? But the NFL is like, we can't give you all of that. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'll spend seven million of my own money. Then that's awesome. I respect it, and I hope the performance doesn't suck. The weekend, Mike, <laughs> halftime show. The weekend halftime show. Oh wow, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Mike, you got to go to New England. Yep, I'm doing it right now. Hey, can't thank you enough, bud. Hell of a year. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Pat, do you have uh, any other uh, props or anything that you've placed on? Um, Yeah, I mean, I had... uh, Boys, if you want to come in and give anything you like a lot real quick, feel free to come in and do that. I have... um, My active bets currently are all parlays, so... I know, you started early. Total players to throw a touchdown pass over two and a half. Okay. That's plus 1,000. That's a a good value. Look for Antonio Brown throwing one to Scotty (laughs) Miller. Get them both on the same yes. field at the same time. Opening kickoff to be a touchback. I put no strictly because plus 230 is damn good mm-hmm. there. Not too crazy about it because Bucker has an yeah. absolute cannon. Coin toss, obviously, we know. Then uh, Shaquille Barrett to win MVP, plus 5,000 odds. Mm-hmm. Article just came out that he was backing up Von Miller when Von Miller did his thing in the Super Bowl. Yep. And said maybe that'll be something he saw what came from Von Miller doing that. By the way, Von Miller was then on Dancing with the Stars. and Against the same tackle. And just went on to yeah. really. So they're saying that's possible. And maybe it is, by the way. Sure. If they win and Patrick Mahomes is on his back a lot, maybe they won't give it to Tom because Tom's already had been there, done that. Mm-hmm. That's why I also like Jason Pierre Paul at plus one, uh, 10,000. Mm-hmm. I got 200 bucks on that, by the way. It'd be that's a $20, quite a thousand dollars. Quite a bit of a payout. Imagine if he does that and Tails hits. <laughs> Glorious. Be a good Monday. Uh, Leonard Fournette, anytime touchdown scorer. I don't know what the individual odds are with that because I parlayed it with Rob Gronkowski, anytime touchdown scorer. <laughs> Rob Gronkowski, over 29 and a half receiving yards. And Antonio Brown, anytime touchdown scorer. That's plus 5,162 odds. Yes. I put 500 bucks in that for 25 <laughs> grand. Playoff Lenny was plus 125, AB plus 200. What about Gronk? Was 300, right? Good question, Do Not that it's it's fine. You got me there. Um, Mitt, you got anything back there? Jay, you like anything back there? Yeah, I like. Uh, I actually like the Bucks big time money line. I'm one of the uh, Nick was coming drinkers. In here. Comes Where's Connor. Nicky Where's Skate? Nick at? I mean, wait, you know what I was going to do, afraid. by the way? I'm a little bit bummed out about this What's whole that? thing. I, I couldn't find any black pants or black hat or uh, I was going to have sunglasses on. I was going to come in here dressed in all black. For a funeral for uh, for Nick's hockey picks, you know what I mean? Because those things died last night. Those things died last night. I bet you guys are happy to see me back. Here he is. Hey, listen, Nick, you're gonna bounce back for sure. Everybody's gonna get got. Hey. You just gotta get yours morning. You get got though, and you've been doing that for hockey. So we will ride with you. But last night was a rough night for you, and I I've been told, and Diggs has been told, and Gumpy, I believe he was part of the conversation. 
you're not going to take any less hack, mm-hmm. hacks at the bat here either. You're, you're going to go ahead and swing away here all night for this hockey thing, right? Can't do it, Pat. Like I told you last week when I went one and nine, uh, we got to <laughs> dig out of that hole. So, And then we did. You know, We clicked at about 70% after that, and then uh, we flew a little too close to the sun, got a little too hot. The hockey gods melted the ice beneath our feet and lopped our heads off, covered us in blood. They chose violence. We're chosen money. We're going to win. We're wow. getting it all back. Wow. What a speech. I mean, just take the bees tonight, right? Pretty much. Fucking right. Yeah. Are you reading that tweet right now as well? <laughs> no, I was, I'm was. i just getting into the FanDuel app here so I can run through all of these bets that Nick's about to do. So one thing I did forget to mention yesterday, which was one of the only bets that did hit, was the boost that FanDuel put together for Austin Matthews to score and Quinn Hughes to get a point. So I won't forget that today with their boost being the Flyers to hold a lead after the first period boosted from 210 to 240. A uh, little info on that, Flyers, 6 of 11 they've scored in the first 10 minutes, and they've gone 4 and 11 going over 1.5 in the first period. So they can score in the first period, and they can score early. Okay. Huh. The problem with the lead is they have Brian Elliott in net, and that's oh. why I'm picking Boston Moneyline at oh. minus 142. They got Brian <laughs> Elliott in, in the, the over. Uh, he's bad as Jari. He yes. stinks, dude. But the Bruins are 4 and 1 straight up in their last five when playing Philly. The total's gone over in four of the last five when they've played at home against Boston. Yes. Okay. So we're going Bruins, money line, and over. That's your picks for the night? Oh, there's a few more. Okay. Oh, that baby it, there, was a, there was an ending in your voice. There was no, a no. We got to go over in the Tampa Bay-Detroit game. Last time, Tampa was up 3 nothing halfway through the first period. So we got to go over, especially at 5.5. Uh, Tampa money line is just too much to take. I think it's like minus 400 or something. But you can take them to win the first period, which uh, they're 4-8 and eight at over 1.5 in the first period. But I think it's only... Uh, minus a half right now, and I think that was minus 105. Did you say was, they're 4-8? and eight? Yeah, they haven't played the same amount of games as everybody else because they've had COVID postponements. Oh, they're just starting to cook. Like Dallas Stars? Maybe. <laughs> stars lost last night. Stars stink, dude. And then we're going under in uh, San Jose and Anaheim, and I'm actually picking San Jose to win. They're minus 101. And then Vegas is back on the ice tonight. They're taking on the Kings, who stink, so you take the over there at 5.5. And if you're feeling frisky, you can take the Vegas puck line at minus one and a half. But they have, they've been laid off due to COVID for a while, so. They could come out flying, they, dude. They could come out flat, too. Here's the parlay I just put together off of Nick's picks there. Uh, Bruins, money line. Mm-hmm. Yep. Red Wings, Lightning, over. Yep. Kings, Golden Knights, over. Yep. Sharks, Ducks, under. Yes. Hey, you did Plus very Plus well, 9.94. Oh, and then Florida. We're taking Florida at home oh. to bounce back. <laughs> They blew it last yeah, night, Nick. giving up two Just goals in the last picks couple or minutes. It's not going to happen again. Mm-mm. We're back with the Florida Panthers, baby. Coach Q. Connor, props? Yeah, I got props. I got eight of them, Tony. Okay, roll through. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. All but right, let's go. Also, breaking news, uh, apparently Trevor Lawrence has to have shoulder repair. So, Whoa. It's on his left. He should be okay for training camp. <laughs> what? Jesus. Wow. Per Adam Schefter. <laughs> Jeez. Shoulder surgery. It's a, it, the shoulder doesn't matter, but that is something to think about whenever he gets tackled. Hmm. Oh, no. Is there going to be red flags in the health department oh. to draft him number one overall? Will the Jacksonville Jaguars now get into play for Deshaun Watson hmm. so they know that they have a player? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Hmm. Connor? All right, first and foremost, obviously. One at a time. One at a time. Okay, okay but uh, Anthony Sherman. Plus 1,500. <laughs> it is now available. People who come on Pat's show during the week yep. do well on the weekends. Yep. Sherman, score, plus 1,500. Smart. Very smart bet. Go ahead. Now, here we go. Tyreek Hill, longest reception, over 27 and a half yards. Book it. Mm-hmm. Scotty Miller, longest reception, over 12 and a half yards. Give me a break. That's free money. <laughs> Ronald Jones, <laughs> over A half a reception. So Ronald Jones, one catch. I mean, literally all these. If you could parlay these, you could make millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Leonard Fournette, over three and a half receptions. Tyreek Hill, over six and a half receptions. Tom Brady, over the 39 and a half pass attempts. He will have to take over. These teams have played each other, guys. And last but not least, (laughs) at plus 650, Pat Mahomes and Tom Brady to have 350 passing yards each. I like that one a lot. I think both these guys are going to have to chuck it 50 times each, boys. See you Sunday. Well, done. See you Sunday. What's your thoughts on the game, Connor? 
I'm taking the over, and I will live bet the team. I got a Tampa future, and it just feels like I'd like to ride it out. But I think both these teams are coming out spinning. So you're not going to hedge that? I, I, I don't know. Maybe I do hedge, you know. Maybe when the live bet starts, maybe it is KC and yeah. I hedge it. You know, I think that's the smart thing to do, but I've never been known to do the smart thing, Tony. True. 1,000% true. Neither does this show. I got to get out of here, guys. I know. Hey, this has been a hell of a run this season. Hell of a run this season. We did it. Took all of us. We did it. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening and watching, whoever did. Thank you. Hammer. Don. Don.